Yo, 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 what's going on? Y'all seen the title. You know what kind of energy this brings. You know what kind of memories this brings. Um, remember the time frame, remember the era. You was outside, you witnessed a lot, you seen a lot going on, right? But before we get into it, as always, thank y'all for stopping through. Thanks for the support. Um, I definitely bring that fuel and bring that energy for me. Um, like, share, subscribe, comment. You know, always let me know you here. Definitely do that. Um, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. The Supreme Team. The Supreme Team. Headed by Supreme McGriff himself. Supreme Team, Queens, New York. That's crazy. I heard about the Supreme Team all the way in Philly. That's crazy. I mean, the middle of it. Not at the beginning, necessarily. You know, we have our own stuff going on. But, definitely at the, um, in the middle of it. We definitely heard about that. Definitely heard about that. It's making a lot of noise. A lot, a lot of noise. Um, so I watched a three-part documentary right um i think irv working on a movie or, or or something like that he working on something he working on a project based on uh the supreme team kind of supreme mcgriff you know prince miller gerald prince miller you know the bimmies the black justice you know they were working on that project um they got green lit i think it got funded now they trying to put it put it together feel me? but let's get back to what Showtime did Showtime did a docu-series little, little three part documentary that covered you know the introduction how Preen started how he really got on well not really how he got on but just kind of touching on the climate I think it was like 84 or something somewhere in there like touching on the climate what was going on during that time I mean how crack hit the streets and the amount of money you know what I mean? And I think I think a very important part of it that they talked about was how, you know, um, the media advertisements, you know, how they um they always promoted that 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 exquisite lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? That for the cars, the jewelry, the clothes, fashion, you know what I'm saying? And really, that was something that was really out of touch for a large part of black America at that time. You know what I'm saying? Especially in those major cities, because you got to remember, a lot of those major cities depended on manufacturing. You know what I mean? So it was a bunch of factories. I mean, I know it hit Philly crazy. I know the same thing about Detroit. I, um, a place like Pittsburgh, you know, was that, that, that you know, the steel industry. Um, they didn't really take a major hit. Like, like I said, I know for a fact, the first cities that come to mind is Philadelphia, you know. In Detroit, when it comes to the manufacturing um, plants and stuff like that, but you know that stuff. Um, so those minimum wage, those jobs that you can go and make a decent salary, and not necessarily need a high school diploma, you know what I mean, or only having a high school diploma, like you can still make damn near like lower middle class, comfortable salary, you know what I mean, and, and, and take care of your folks. So when crack hit the streets, you know what I mean? It caused mass destruction for our communities, no doubt about it, you know what I mean? But the law of of, of what came with it, bro, is what you stand in, stay in the game financially, you know what I mean? From a financial standpoint, from a reputation standpoint. You know, I always tell people, it, it's, it's a lot that comes with that game, you know what I mean? It's two sides of it. If you if you if you infatuated with the positives of it, i.e. the money, the women, the jewelry, the cars, the material items, sum it up with that. The the um the reputation, access, you know what I mean? You gotta take what come with that. You gotta come what come with the other side of that. Police, rats, stick up kids. And when I say police, I'm talking feds. I ain't talking I ain't like I always said, if I can see your badge, I don't that don't bother me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some dudes, you can't see the badge till they pull it out. You know what I mean? Or well, they got brim breakers on. 
you know, that's what people worried about, windbreakers. But um that was a that was a time, man, that was a time in life where, you know, the streets was uh what he started getting, the streets was already kinda wild, but the streets got wilder because of the amount of money people was fighting for. You know what I mean? Territory. That's really what the war is over territory. You know what I mean? But getting back to Supreme Team. Um you know McGriff, like uh Kenneth Supreme McGriff, shout out, you know what I mean, salute. Um it kinda told his story partly, right? Partly told his story, loosely told his story. Even though he was on the phone, he was on the phone conducting a lot of information, giving a lot of information to whoever was interviewing them, asking them questions. The same thing the Prince. Um, you know, they was on the phone talking about their case and talking about, you know, really how they got started and what they and what they was facing and and, and how they was moving. You know what I mean? They definitely talking about how they was moving. And they didn't really go in depth. And I, and I, and I think partly they ain't go but so much in depth for two reasons. Right? I don't think they went super in depth because Irv got his project going and you don't want to give but so much away already. Even though the streets know a lot. Like, like if you if you really understand that, you know what I'm saying? If you really move around in those zones... Ooh, pardon me. If you move, if you really moved around in those zones, or, or or kept your ears to the streets, you heard about a lot of these dudes, man. You heard a lot of, you already know a lot of their story. You know what I mean? But it still, ain't nothing like somebody telling their story, being a being a narrator for their own story. It's nothing like that. You know what I mean? But I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a case of they really gonna give Irv the real, the real capturing information that's going to lock you in you feel me but i think the other side is that they really can't go but so much in depth of certain stuff if they wasn't convicted of it or admitted to it they really can't talk about it because you got you got prince he got the appeal joint i think the um the first act or second act law whatever it was where pretty much if you was a um a non-violent drug offender you know what i'm saying they they let you out right but, um, you know, they're not going to talk about no murders. They're not, they're not talking about no murders, man. They can't talk about no murders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't no statute of limitations on murder. And I ain't going to be out here telling on, on record talking about how I'm, call, how I'm causing all this wreck and how I shot whatever up. You know what I'm saying? Because then they're going to put that propensity for violence on my jacket. And he ain't getting out. You know what I mean? Dude been down a minute, man. What, over 30 easy you know what I mean he ain't trying he all great and all that like he man listen he's not gonna be over there talking about the wreck he can't he's not in a position of talking about the wreck now and he can't really have his folks talking about it because you know the crown is the the head is, is heavy the crown bearer you know what I'm saying you got that crown on your head you got tick what come with that so so your underlings the former underlings is out here talking about how he was causing all this wreck they gonna attach that to his jacket, man. You gotta do one plus one. Yeah, I know people wanna be entertained and all that, but they really can't go all in depth all crazy with the wreck, man. They might as, he might as well pull his appeal then. Definitely can't talk about no homicides. Definitely can't talk about no homicides. You know, they try to put the um allegedly, right? They try to put the Colombian uh, a bunch of four Colombians walked into Baisley houses. They never walked out. That was like their base of operation, Baisley houses in uh, Queens, New York. But, you know, you can't... Uh, so he's saying four, four Colombians walked in. They never walked out. They tried to attach that joint to Prince. You know what I mean? They tried to put that on his tab. But he rumbled that joint and he beat it. You know what I'm saying? The only thing he couldn't beat was the work. I mean, they still gave him the Rico joint, saying he was at the top of the conspiracy. You know what I mean? Legend has it when 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 Prem got booked, the reins fell down to his nephew Prince. You know what I'm saying? Prem was definitely more diplomatic, more business savvy. He definitely had that joint running on all cylinders. That joint was a V Twizzy, and he had that joint chirping. Like, everybody know that. You know what I'm saying? Like you going, you got you got to give it up to Prem on that one. And Prince is, is just as smart as Prem, 
But um, I think at that time, Prince habits, you know, he had a little bit different habits. I ain't talking drug habit. I'm talking like, and, and it's just what I gather from the docu-series, right? From the little documentary. His, 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 his ex-wife was on there saying pretty much when she got bored, how she would take a stack and go blow it on some crazy, you know what I'm saying? She ain't had no job, so she probably was bored every day. You know what I'm saying? She ain't had to work, nigga. He did that. He held that down. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, he was a fly, flashy dude. You see, he had to, you know what I mean? For what, for, for, for what it was then, super fly, flashy. I mean, the business and all that came later. Them dudes really got it from the muscle, though. Nissans and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got it for real, though. But, and I think I think that's what different between Preem and, and Prince, though, because um, I think Preem was a little bit more disciplined in certain areas, especially in the, in the, in the, in the financial area. Um, I think, like I said, I think, I think, I think, I think, the, I think Prince's, um, you know, his he wasn't as disciplined fiscally as as uh, Cream was, and the reason being is that, well, I don't really want to get in that. I can't put that on his tab. But pretty much, they said four Columbia's. They was the supplier, so they saying they was going to Basley House just to re up with, uh, with the with the with the team via Prince. He said they walked in. They never walked out. They don't know what happened to them. I don't think they never found they remains or nothing. So they charge, they try to charge Prince with that joint, but he beat it. You know what I mean? Like he 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 got with his lawyer. It was ill. His lawyer was telling him pretty much like he knew this whole case. He knew the discovery. He knew he knew the wiretap. It was not a part of that man case. He ain't no front and backwards. You know what I mean? So he rumbled. The stuff he rumbled, he knew he can beat. You know what I'm saying? The stuff he didn't rumble, he pleaded out on him. He knew what time it was. You know what I mean? But it was it was definitely smart from the rumble of murders more than anything else because you know it's, it's easier to um to got to, to get out on a pill on on the, on the drug joint. You're not getting out on, on no homie. Like whatever they give you, they gonna give you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no compassionate release. It ain't none of that. It ain't no law that's gonna come to save you. So. He definitely played a heck of a chess game with that part of one. Like, he beat the feds on that joint. That was crazy. You know what I mean? But the crazy part about it was he beat the state first. Right? Because he beat the state first. Then the feds double backed on him with the same evidence that he beat in the... I ain't even know you can do that. Like, that's ill. They used the same exact evidence, though, that he already beat on the state level. No new information, no new none of that. But now you just dealing with a different jury. <laughs> you're dealing with different guidelines. You're dealing with different judges. You know what I'm saying? They gonna hear that a little differently the way the feds gonna present it. Cause because people are automatically gonna believe that the feds did their homework. The feds be lying too. They do do their homework, but they lie like they lie like the rest of the police do. You know what I'm saying? But I just thought I just thought that was ill um, on how they put that together. I'm definitely looking forward to Bimmy, oh, uh, not Bimmy. I'm looking forward to, um, to Irv John and the show, um, the show, Preen was talking about, you know, when he came home. He said him and him and Irv already had a little relationship or whatever. But if you know, like, we already have a relationship with a lot of the, like, Jay-Z's and all that. I think that was a little different. I think it was a little bit more to that, but you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put that out there like that. I don't got no evidence of it. I just think it was different. I just think it was a little more going on to that. On some, you got me around. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You, you benefiting from me being around you. You, you got to cut a check. You know what I'm saying? I, I really think that's what that was about. But um, it, it pretty much showed that relationship and how 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 Irv trying to look out for him. He tried to give him a, um, an exec position with Murder Inc. And and Prem turned it down. And he said, pretty much, if I'm a worker, and this is the way I got it. Like, so so I'm, I'm gonna finish this first. But pretty much saying, no, not pretty much saying. He said he said he told Irv that I know what you're trying to do for me. It's a nice position, come with a six-figure salary. But if I'm just an exec at your company, I can't be Prem. 
You know what I mean? Meaning that I'm no longer a boss because now you my boss and I don't I don't carry that same allure. I don't carry that same you know what I mean? My reputation ain't gonna be carried the same because now I went from a, a boss to a worker. And that, and it's, and that, you know, that's ego driven. You know what I mean? On one end, I, I would, I would, I don't really respect that angle. I'm not gonna lie. Now, if he would have said, "Yo, man, listen, I appreciate the look, but I'm used to getting it from the mud. I climb up and get it myself, however I used to get it." You know what I'm saying? I, I respect that a little more. But you saying that you can't be preem if you just an exec. So you want to come in and be the CEO of Murder Inc? That would have been cool for you? You know what I mean? But, so we talked about that, tie that in with the 50 situation. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, honestly, I kind of, as I, as, as I get older, I kind of look at that a little different now, right? Now, they did come at... I don't look at it completely different. I don't look at it because, because I, I still got to side with fifth on that one. But I think I think um, I think Fifty kind of forced his hand. I don't think Prem wanted. You know, I mean, he ain't died. Statue of limitations up on that joint. So I don't, I don't even think I don't even think Prem wanted to set that in motion. You know, what I mean, I don't think he wanted to set that in motion. But I think that once again, he can't be Prem if he let that go. You know what I mean? If he got if he got 50 out here running around doing what he doing, saying what he's saying, screaming what he's screaming, and he ain't he ain't listening to none of the old heads. Like he wasn't even listening to Slim. Oh, my Chaz Williams. Chaz Williams. Black hand entertainment. You know what I mean? He passed away like a year or two ago, R.I.P. to Chaz, big homie. But um another he another legend. He another he another legend up in New York. Legend. He a dude that did bank robberies while he was in the jail. Like he was in the jail on a on a work release program where he had to turn it, he had to go back to the jail every night. So when he came out during the day, he was robbing banks to going back to the jail at night. <laughs> That's ill. Yo, Chaz is ill. I, Chaz was ill. But um Um Yeah, I think I think I think I think what happened with that was um Prem had his hand forced. Like he ain't really had no, he ain't had no other alternative. It was too, it was too much height on it. It was too much money involved. But we start talking about his street, his street reputation, his street business, with the, uh, with the music business. It, 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 it was, it, it was too much. It was too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was too much. But, um, you no, know, they talked about that all we, all we too. You know what I mean? The killing of um, E Money Bags. E Money Bags is the Queen's legend. I think he from Left Rack originally, or not? I think he from Brooklyn originally, but I think I think he moved to Left Rack or something like that. But he um he was part of that crew with um the Young Guns, or, um the Young Guns, Stretch, my, uh, Live Squad, you no, know, who Pac um who Pac was rolling with when he went to New York before before the Quiet Studio situation. Um, but you no, know, it, it talked about that. Once again, his hand was forced. His hand was definitely forced. If he, I mean, I don't know if he did that or not, but it was a situation where, you know, he came up, you know, doing what he do. Black just wound up getting killed. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's up from there. But I think he had killing those homicides as well. So, I mean, all that's allegedly. But, um, you know, they kind of cut out Bimmy, which I, I, the play devil's advocate, I understand why they cut out Bimmy. Like you had to cut out Bimmy. Um, you know that's it. That situation with Fifty was real life. Like, like that wasn't no entertainment. That wasn't that wasn't nothing to be playing with. That wasn't nothing to be playing with. You know, um, and that's one of the things that on this one you got to pick a side. You can't be trying to play both sides. Like that's definitely one of them situations. Shout out to Bimmy. Bimmy was. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm speeding past. Bimmy took over the took over the Supreme team after Prem got booked and after Prince got booked. Bimmy was a young nigga getting money with him. He, he was he was a young boy, you know what I'm saying? But through through pure attrition, he got elevated because of the arrest and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But um but um you know he took over, he did his thing, took over the Supreme team, he made a bunch of money. Jam Master J tried to get him out the game too. 
at that time before he got booked and did a bunch of time. You know what I'm saying? But they tried to get him, tried to um, try to get him out the way, teach him the music game. I mean, make him exec and all that. But he was caught up, and you gotta understand, it's not that simple, man. When you in that, it ain't that simple, man. It's so easy to get stuck with that. You know what I mean? Mentally. Especially, I mean, Bemi's making more money than Jam Master J, I guarantee you. He's making more money on the street than Jam Master J was getting. Going around DJing or whatever with Run DMC, I guarantee you he's getting more people. Just was. That's, that's why a lot of those basketball dudes who never went to the NBA, who had NBA deals on the table, they turned them down. They was getting way more money on the street. You know what I mean? But, um, but like I said, the whole situation with Bimmy not being involved in this project, or it may not be involved in, in a project with Irv Evers, because, like I said, that 50 Cent situation was a real life situation. You know what I mean? It was a real, real, real life situation. And, you can't, that's something you can't play both sides on. You, you with me or you or you against me. You can't, but you ain't going to play the middle, though. You ain't going to play the middle on this one. And I respect that and I understand that. You know what I mean? I still wish Bimmy was a part of it because Bimmy got a heck of a story to tell itself. But I think I think 50's working with Bimmy to tell his And I think that's why, you know, 50's a crazy dude, man. But but but, but he but he he mastered the art of war. He mastered the art of war. In the, 50, in the, in the 48 Laws of Power, he mastered it. You know what I mean? And um, I think it's a situation where he gonna get with Bimmy to bring his story to light. So, so, so he could be a part of pre Minimum Project. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a situation where they gonna double back and he gonna get a story told. He got a heck of a story. Like, for, for y'all don't know who he is, he, um, he Deb Atney brother and Waka Flocka uncle. Deb is a monster too though. Like, I don't think people know Deb is a monster. Really about that. Really come from that. But um, it was it was a lot of fallout from, from the Supreme team though. I don't, I don't think people realize like how much stuff they put in play unintentionally though, right? So you know we I mean you know how long the Rico statue's been around and, and all this other stuff. But as I as I was watching it and I started mentally connecting the dots myself, um, I remember and they started talking about um Edward Byrne. Edward Byrne is a cop, um. Who was stationed? I, I want to say he was stationed outside the Jets or stationed out of somebody's situation when they was getting a bunch of money. He was in the way, and um, he wound up getting killed. They wound up killing him. He was sitting in his patrol car. They walked up on him and, and, and hit him a bunch of times. You know what I'm saying? And what that did was that put so much pressure on, on the drug traffickers, right, in, in the cities. Well, especially New York, especially Queens. They put so much pressure on them for that because of, because if you can kill a, a New York City cop, you know what I'm saying? You can kill a cop law enforcement, and, and like, like I said, in, 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 in full, um, full uniform, yep. marked car. You can walk up on him and kill him with no, no, no kids in the world. But what do they say? Like, like that's going to lead to mayhem. That's going to lead to, to, to lawlessness. You know what I mean? So that happened in, in 1988. That happened in February 1988. So you know about 1988, you know that they amended and put out new uh, crack bills, right? The crack bill, the, the part of the crack bill that was amended or was added was the, was the drug trafficking, right? So that's important. That's important because it's a lot that came with that, when well, it came within them, um, within that, that bill they passed within that specific passage. Um, you know, they had the RICO. They, they already don't sent two Supreme dudes away for the RICO, right? But now they wanna they wanna cripple the organization. They wanna cripple all facets of the organization. They wanna cripple it from whoever going to whoever going to um, whoever going to the supplier, whoever is gonna be in the kitchen cooking, whoever packaging, whoever on the corner, they're gonna tie all that into a, in, in, into a drug trafficking DTF. That's the name of that joint. No, no, DTO, my fault, DTO, Drug Trafficking Organization, DTO. My bad, I'm sounding like Herschel Walker up here. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, so DTO derived from that, right? 
to where now they're going to attack every single level of that organization, every level, not just the major player, not just the major players no more. Every level of that organization is going to get attacked, right? And that's what came out in '88, and I believe fully that that derived directly from when Edward Byrne got killed, because every part of that became under siege that previously wasn't under siege. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know they 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 they. They add a, a little bit of other stuff with that, you know what I mean? But it was ill. It was ill. It definitely was ill. They definitely put on for Queens. Definitely, they definitely put on for Queens. Um, I, I, I would recommend going to watch it. I would recommend going to watch it. Like I said, it's on, it's on Showtime. It's on demand. Check it out. Um. Yeah, and then, like, like, like I said at the end, it talked about, you know, they had Preen and Prince on the phone talking about the, the state of their current cases. You know, they both was convicted of what they was convicted of. Preen was conv convicted of some homicides, one in Baltimore and the one in Queens of um, E-Money Bags. Um, and, you know, Prince was convicted for for being at the top of a RICO on the drug side of it. Like, they couldn't get him on no homicides. But pretty much they both appealing their cases. They both trying to find a way to get home. I think Prince has the way better odds because you know under 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 that um, new act they put out when it comes to non-violent uh, drug offenders, he fits the bill to to a T, and he already has done over thirty years. So what more you you want from him on that? You know what I'm saying? But I think the part that he gonna run into trouble is, and the reason why he even was coming after Prem for for all that, the reason why Prem was still public enemy number one is because. He was at the top of the Supreme. He created the Supreme Team and all the branches that came from it. Pappies and Fat Cats, all that come from Prem, man. You got to understand that. All that comes from Prem. Even though they had their own situations, getting their own money on their own blocks, all them dudes come from Prem, man. So at the end of the day, Prem got to carry that weight for killing that cop. Even though he was in the bean, he had nothing to do with it. And he told Prince to, 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 to stop playing with the drug. And he told him, yo, chill out, leave that alone. But they still gonna look at it like, yo, you still, all this is still your fault because you created this. You know what I'm saying? And they still gonna look at Prince the same way with Pappy going to do that because they looking like, yo, at that time you was the head honcho on the streets. You was a dude that was in charge, moving that, moving all the pieces around. So they still gonna put that on him. So if that, if, he, if he's gonna have any problems getting out, that's that cop getting killed, the officer Byrne getting killed is gonna be. Would keep some behind bars, even though he ain't had nothing to do with that. Even though Pappy confessed to it, told what role he played in it. I think he told everybody involved. Like he gave up all the tapes on that joint. But you know what I'm saying? That cop got killed, dog. Ain't no turning back from that. You know they ain't gonna let that go ever. They ain't ever gonna let that go. You heard? But yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. Go check that joint out. I still think it's dope. I still think it's a lot of game in there. You got a lot of dudes in there. Who, who 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 was moving around and told the the, the, the positive and negative impacts they had on their life even to this day. That's why I think it's worth really checking out. But um appreciate y'all like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know y'all was in the building, man. You always you already know.